Octocast 174. I have my friends with me that I missed so much. I have uh, Kim Smith with me. Good morning, Gloucester. I have Donna Arizona <laughs> from Somerville, Massachusetts. Good morning, Gloucester. Uh, there we go. That uh, was good, Donna. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we got a bunch of topics. I miss you guys. It's been. Uh, it's gonna be like a couple weeks. It's now. a couple yeah. weeks well, since you we did. Yeah. We. I saw you at St. Joseph's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, we've been busy. Everybody's been busy, but vacation yeah. mainly. Yeah. But uh, we're back, and we got a bunch of things to talk about today. Uh, first, I want to mention, I want, I want to remind everybody one of my favorite, favorite is Fiesta and his Bikini Speedo Dodgeball. <laughs> Bikini Speedo Dodgeball is coming up April 9th at Camp Spindrift. Uh, thank you to Rick, uh, Rick uh, Dowsett, my buddy, uh, nice and, and uh, the staff over there for helping us out and uh, with the farm bar and grill and Good Morning Gloucester putting this great show on and uh, everybody has Kim Donna was a, a ref last year do you have oh, a good time were. Donna? I had a great time in my blonde wig did, oh, did, <laughs> did you do you get hit with balls or anything when you're refing? I got hit with a lot of stuff oh you did but then some of the the coaches though were funny they were like here's a 20 if you don't call my guy out <laughs> just so out. what I did is if some people gave me dollar bills and I gave it back to Rick I said yeah, it's funny. but that was kind of funny well, that's that, funny yeah because it's just a lot right it's very nice right, right and Kim and Kim uh, does a lot of filming for it yes do you have a good time at it filming yeah I, I, did I do it last year I don't think I did it last year I got a uh, I posted a vi- the video you did of the uh, the fi- you the put a, a nice time. the party time video. I posted oh I posted that this morning. <laughs> that uh, was a funny one. It was oh pretty, pretty <laughs> But it, but okay. So on a scale from one to ten, if you weren't associated with Good Morning Gloucester, would you tell people that you really shouldn't miss this or, or not? Oh, absolutely. Go. Do not bring your children. Because <laughs> it's an adult. It's kind of an adult. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And let it be an adult. But don't yeah. you, Kim? Don't yes. you think it's a fun time? It's fun. Yes. <laughs> That wasn't very enthusiastic. I'm, 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 t- I'm going out there and saying it is a complete spectacle. It is. It doesn't cost anything to go to. Uh, you can donate if you you'd donate. like to to Camp Spindrift because we like to support them. But even if you didn't, if you didn't have a team in, it's just it's, crazy. It is, I would rather do this than I would. Oh, I, you know, I love. I haven't gone to a roller derby um, bout oh. in a while. But roller derby is a lot I've of fun. I've never been too. to a roller derby. They're, they're, they're great. Fun. They're great. They're too. fun too. But like you know, but we don't charge you to get into this. Right. So no, you, and it's. You're outside. Yeah, it's a you're spectacle. Outside. Great time. Yeah, it's you're a spectacle. Outside. It's better than a Red Sox is it, game. Is yeah. there a rain date? I wonder. No, no you never. What uh, I don't know. We'd probably, pull, we'd probably pull it off like a following yeah. weekend. We haven't figured yeah. that. So yeah. we don't have to worry about that because the gods <laughs> love, rain down their love on us. And we always and have a good time. It's beautiful there. You see no. there. Yeah. April yeah. 9th. Oh, go location. to the blog. We have information there for you on the blog on uh, on where to uh, on where to go and to park and everything else like that. Um, so there's that. Uh, Easter's coming up. So Easter's coming up uh, this weekend. It's kind yes. of snuck up on us because yes. I think I've, like we're so inundated with posts yeah. about St. Joseph. Right. Now and it's, it's early this year. It's very early. Right. It's, uh, it's, right. Yeah, all right, March. Right. Usually Easter's right. April, you think. Right. It How do they figure that it's out? It's something to do with the What's, calendar right. and the Passover. Um, and I think How, it's, though? What is it? Does that have to do with the moon? I, yes, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, it is like more one of the lunar holidays. So, yeah. Because yeah. the full moon is tomorrow. Well, actually, I don't know about that for sure. I'm not going to go it's, out on a limb. No, no don't sound because you sound like a dope if it's not. <laughs> but, what, but, of, but there has what, to be, right? Because I, I, like, I don't know how you can go late April, April to early right. to late yeah, May. Yeah, there's right. some sort of right. it's very mathematical it's, thing. It's not usually this early, you know. Somebody's got to do, yeah, yeah. do the research on that? Yes, I'll find out. I'm surprised EJ hasn't done it with all her <laughs> psychotic uh, Jesus stuff that she's been doing. <laughs> but I think it has something to do with how it all, it is the calendar. Huh? Something about you know yes. how they. they uh, you know, hey, e- EJ. If anyone's because li- EJ probably doesn't listen to this, but any, anyone of EJ's friends that sees EJ uh, out, out and about because I hardly see her anymore and I miss her, ask her to tell us why Easter, how they determine what day okay, Easter, uh, Easter falls. Okay, because there was somebody kind of who wanted to, to keep me. it on the same day. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah, I heard that on the news. Well, they, they can't change that. They can't, See, that they goes along change. with my, uh, right. you know, my yeah. how I would like to not have uh, uh, daylight savings time. There, there are places that are doing away with it. Arizona like, doesn't have it. 
I think it has to do with how many sun. You know how there's um, Advent and how many Sundays after um, after Christmas is how they determine it. Because there's but it would be always the same then. No, because um, Sundays fall in different Sundays fall in different times of the um, year. You know what I mean. And I, so I, wait, wait. Say say so, your theory so, again. So the number of Sundays between Christmas and Easter, I think, determines it. I'm not quite sure, but I think. Yeah, but how could you have? Uh, okay, and yeah. and maybe I'm wrong here, but how could you potentially have one on the 26th of? March, right, and then, and then one on April, well, in the middle of April, because there, there's because right. too much of play there. Right, there's too much of play. Okay. And sometimes well, it's right the day before Patriots Day. I, I remember yeah. having to see the day. But you, some, you somebody, see, somebody, oh, maybe, we'll, maybe I'll can, email EJ and ask her to figure it out, because she's all at, about that stuff right now. You can see how much I paid attention at Sunday school. <laughs> None of us know. It's a mathematical thing, though. It does have to do with well, we're the gonna, We're going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, no, never mind our theories. If we were Mar- Marjorie and Jim, we'd have a little staff telling us, <laughs> feeding us information. <laughs> Who's Marjorie, Marjorie and Jim? Jim? Oh, Brownie? Yes. yes. Ah. Yeah. What is that? What's the name of that show? Um, I don't know if they're on anymore. Yeah, they're on every day. The Brown Report or something? Yeah, yeah they're on every Jim day. Jim Brownie and Margie. Egan. Margie Egan. Egan. Yeah, they're, I love them because they are um, they just always are up on everything going on in Boston. Yeah, and that's I, nice. lo- I love, like, no, you know, keeping in touch with what's going on yeah. in Boston. I like so. that channel for yeah. that reason. Yeah. What yeah. channel are they on? New England Cable News. Oh, well, I, li- I listen to them on the radio. Oh, yeah. yeah on the I think they're the part of the New England Cable News. Oh, so they broadcast their show oh, yeah, on yeah. the radio as I, well as TV? I don't, th- I don't know. Is because the same Mar- thing? No, I don't think it's the same thing because Marguerite's always saying she's, you know, she, she doesn't have a face for um, TV, but she's on. He's been on, though. Yeah. He has a, she has a separate show. Yeah. Oh, the okay. show that they have on NPR is on every day. Um, from 11 to 2, I oh, believe. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, like, because I'm always driving to and from a program or going to g- See, a that's lecture. what she listen to. I listen yeah. to, uh, I listen to uh, the, either Tony Kornheiser or our podcast, or Alicia's or mm-hmm. ours, or I listen to um, the, uh, uh, the Bill Burr's podcast. I have, like, three, there's three podcast. there's four podcasts that I listen to in rotation. You do, yeah. 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 Interesting. I love I love podcasts. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. they're pro- I wonder if they put uh, Jim Brown's show on. Uh, on if on you can subscribe it's, it's, to it on iTunes. On iTunes, I wonder. perhaps. Huh. I'll look at that. Yeah. Oh, uh, but you know what? You can also just go to um, NPR and listen to it too. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yeah. Well, I listen to that. I listen to other. I listen to the BBC, and I listen to um, the River Radio Station when I'm driving around because I love the. Um, they play a combination of new rock and roll and um, old rock and roll. So, a river. Yeah, the river. It's a great. It's, it's one it's of the few. Kind of local. Too. Yeah, it's in Andover. It's one of the few independent radio stations that are still in operation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great radio station. I love the. I love all the um, broadcasters' voices too. They have great voices. I'm a 104.1 girl. <laughs> yeah. 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 There we go. I get uh, hip with the music now. Yeah, hip, hip and happening. Um, Dave Moore, our buddy from what is Love it? Him. South Korea. South Korea. Yeah, he, he couldn't. Him. He couldn't be in North Korea, could he? No, 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 because he's in the army or right. army or some, some military. Some secret. He wouldn't yeah. be able to send us anything. Yeah, he, he wouldn't be able to send. <laughs> he sent me a package the other day. He he actually has called me. A few times. That's so. He so we should explain man. who Dave Moore is. Dave Moore, Dave Moore not the is, guy that has the internet, uh, no. lo- local uh, website internet. It's no. Dave, Dave Moore, Moore is a super, super fan of the blog, and he and is he, extremely kind, kind all the time. He is like, yeah. yeah there's nothing negative. So yeah. he comments on every his yes. his daily routine consists of. I don't know because I I see when his comments come in. It's, it's, it's obviously on the other side of the right. world. Right. So he, I don't know if he does it in the evening, he, his time, or what. It's but, his time. So yeah. they come in like every two minutes, there's a new comment that I get a notification that I need right. to approve. <laughs> at, and, and they come rapid fire, and it's like literally 20. So he, does, he, he comments on everybody's posts. And he never says nice. anything bad. No, he never does. Yeah. Um, and so when he called me a couple of times, which just made my day. I mean, yeah. he's calling from South Korea. He sounded like he was next door. I can just imagine. And... Um, so he sent you a care package. He go, sent me go, a over, care go over what's in the care package. He sent me pictures of him and his wife Kim from 1989. 
Um, he sent me. And his wife is Korean. Yes. Yeah. And he, he must have met her in the, in the service. I think he probably was stationed. Actually, we got, so Dave, I know you listen to the podcast because he always comments on the podcast as well. Dave, give us the background story of how you met your wife. We want to hear that. Okay, go ahead. Kim. Uh, okay, uh, also, um, he's originally from Sumville. Oh, yeah. So we have uh, a connection, connection right yeah. there. Oh, then he does, he still have a little, does he still have a little bit of a Somerville accent? Um, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, over the he, phone. Yeah, he yeah. sounds like a handsome man, and he is. You know how you can tell. <laughs> Uh, you can but, tell that on the phone. I do, yes, I don't you can he's tell a, that. He's got a voice for, for, for TV. Yeah. So, but he is, in, and then he lived in Lanesville, and he has a lot of memories of Gloucester. I mean, growing up. But he comments a lot. Whenever there's a Lanesville post, he, he, he yeah. goes into like and old school Lanesville stuff. he remembers Lanesville. things when, when he was a kid. He sent me, and I put it up on the post, his first communion Little, um, oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. he sent he it lugged, to me. Uh, he has a lot of memorabilia and, and artifacts from back here, so he lugged all that stuff over there. Over there. Uh, so tell me, so, so what he did, what he, else did he sent send? me uh, some patches, and I was going to show my grandchildren. What does that say? Uh, this is the law enforcement, and I believe he was in the law enforcement. He's very it respectful says, for policemen. It says National Law Enforcement Officers yes. Memorial. And uh, a patch, it looks like a South Korean patch with the star, uh, with the Kim, do you have a camera? Yeah. Yes. All right, turn camera. We'll, we'll, we'll add these patches to the, to the to the post. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I believe the other patch is probably something he wore on his uniform. All right. This one says, 460 GMBT SPT 80, yeah, strength is. and support. And it, there's wings, and then there's like a yin yang thing with uh, with two like samurai swords going through them. And he he's interesting. He's very, very interesting. respectful of uh, police officers. Yeah. Uh, he well, also sent me a picture of him in 1989, and one in 1984, which is very funny because, you know. Yeah. There he is there in a picture of his lovely wife, Kim. Right, I'm going to guess. Okay, let me see that I picture again. So this is 84. 84. 84, I was a junior in high school, and he <laughs> looks age. to be about 26. So I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess uh, he is 50. I'm going to guess that he's 58 years old. That's my guess. Maybe more than okay. 60. Um, he sent me also a cute little note. Um, and it says... It says a website for cleanups this way. They have like because I do the one hour at a time gang, and yeah. they have one in South Korea, sort of the same oh, thing nice. we do. Oh. Um, and he said um, some postcard stickers, Korean won. Uh, love your friend from the big pond from from over the big oh, pond or something yeah, so, Don, so love, Donna so Donna's love how cute is he love your so friends across the how many how much won did he send you I want you to add, let's add up see the total. how much won he sent me well they they say a thousand but that's so, not so we don't want it has There's numbers one right? two three four five six won six thousand won six thousand won six thousand won for 25 cents yeah and it's from <laughs> <laughs> and it says the Bank of Korea on the back. Oh yeah, huh. in English. Huh. Oh wow, that's interesting. It is English. Huh. So six thousand won. Oh, it's, okay. Oh, wait, I Let's have a. I have up. an app. I have an app. I have an app. Okay. Six thousand won. Uh, Some of it's, it's gonna, older money. Oh yeah, look at. Okay, hold on. We're gonna find out how much this. I think it's very cool. South Korean won is worth. Let's see. It's very picturesque. It has a little um, for our for our viewers. It has a pagoda with some um, cherry blossoms. Or plum blossoms. South. He oh, here it is. I got it. Okay, ready? Um, <laughs> and it okay. also has a, a sage looking person. Okay. And he also sent postcards of all the beautiful temples. Oh. All right, hold on. Here, here, here's your, here, this is going to be it right here. We're gonna, I'm going to tell you how much it is. 6,000. 6,000 won. Guess, I'm going to tell Take a guess. How much do you think it is? You were right. No, no. Take a guess. How much do you think it is? I don't know. I'm going to say $1.25. For 6000 won? A well, dollar twenty five. I don't know. Well, take a yeah. guess. Just say a number, Kim. Okay, $6. $6. $10. $10. $5.17. <laughs> pretty good. That was a pretty good guess. I mean, this is that's amazing. That beautiful stuff from oh, Seoul, that's beautiful. Korea. So Don is showing us um, yeah. pictures of temples and a yin-yang sign and these... 
a beautiful walkway with um, I think cherry uh, blossoms. There's a pagoda and, there. Yeah, yeah, pagodas. Yeah, but, and Very nice. Dave, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the story about your uh, how you met your Korean wife. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Very, cool. Very, very Thank you, Dave. I enjoyed I got very excited when it came. So. I should have tied in when you when you when you mentioned that they have a clean uh, cleanup day. Yeah. I should mention this Saturday you're doing the one hour at a time gang, yeah. at, and uh, you're meeting in St. Peter's Peace Park Square. at St. Peter's Square. St. Peter's Square. That's yeah. They call it St. Peter's Park. But Isn't there another one though that's called that? I don't, it's down on uh, Main and Rogers. Okay. Because there's another one up on Ledgemere, Ledgemont. Okay. Well, St. Peter, Peter's Square, where they yeah. have the fiesta, right. yep. it's also right. called St. Peter's Park, yep. St. Peter's Square, if you will. Um, at what time are you meeting? 8. 8 a.m. there. 8 Donna will have bags. Bring gloves for yourself. Bring gloves and dress appropriately. I always tell people to. It's because it's, it's cold and windy down there. Uh, it's right cold the, the other day. We are on the back shore. It was very right. cold. Oh. There you go. And blow uh, away time. So go <laughs> meet there and have a good time and meet some really It's good, good exercise and it does help. Trying to keep the city clean, oh, especially phenomenal. after this winter. It just, you get good, it's good juju. Phenomenal. It's it, gonna be less bad than it was last year because you don't have all the, you didn't have the snow collected. We don't, have, no. we all don't the have that big right. mess at Good Harbor and yeah. Sheik that we had right. last year. That mound at Good Harbor was just. Do you guys have a what? Did you? Do you, do you have a, I have a Facebook page. A Facebook page? Yeah, one hour at a time. Oh, we should have. link to that. Yeah, I, I, I think I have that. Do I like that page? I don't know. I don't think I've ever do you put, that page. I like I'll it. Do you put the post in the do you, when you when you? I'll just see if do I do. Do you do a weekly post? I, I do. It's and going do, up tomorrow. Do, do you link to the Facebook? I will page? do that tomorrow. Do yeah, that tomorrow. Because it's going up. I okay. put it up on GMG on Wednesday. Okay. To uh, to make sure that everybody sees it and can plan. Yeah, yeah. and can plan. And yeah. we have. Yeah. Sometimes 20 people. Oh, that's awesome. We also missed out, speaking about uh, another topic, Easter. Donna's plan, Donna's plan you're going to go on the Boatport Princess. Boatport Princess oh, for their brunch. Oh, that's so exciting. It is exciting. Oh. I decided I wanted not to cook. Right. Everybody's everywhere else, you know, which is Who's, fine. How many people are you going to have? No, I'm not cooking. It's just Rick and I going on I, the Boatport Oh, so it's just the two of you. Not, mm -hmm. no, none of your kids are going to be there. No, because Eric is somewhere, Kimberly's somewhere. You know, they're all married. How much so is it for a ticket? 58, and that includes the cruise, one to four, okay. and a brunch. And not having to clean up. And not having to clean up. And not having to purchase <laughs> goods. And I'll be, you know, I don't have to deal with, sometimes it's just too much. Cooking a big meal for Easter when it's just two of you is kind of oh, ridiculous. Oh, I kind of hard. You know, I mean, and, you know, usually it's other kids, yeah. but they all have different things, things to do. Fun. They're all married now, yeah. so yeah. And that's fine with me. It doesn't People bother me. People love... Uh, that, those cruises, uh, especially for events, like a lot of people yes, like them for, um, you know, like uh, memorial service. Yeah. You know, after that, you get together instead of having a heavy uh, people at your house and everything when you just right. wanna. And right. it's a good relax. time. It's right. one to four, so because we all have to work on Monday. Right. Um, it's, it's the just, sun is out. It's just, it's just the right amount of time. It's just the right amount right. of time, and yes. it doesn't, you know. I was it's at, after eight o'clock at night. I'm in my jammies. Well, my darling daughter is coming. Um, she and Matt have Friday. They have Good Friday off, so they're driving late Thursday night for the whole weekend. Oh. From New York? Yes. Hot, yeah, just, Kim, <laughs> Kim, all her buttons are bursting right now. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, oh, that's I'm great. So that's I hope and I get to see Al them. Yeah, Alex has Saturday night off. So, oh, um, wow. Yeah, so. Big party at your house. Yeah. Woo! Keg that's stands. <laughs> funnels. You get crazy? No, we're actually all going to Duck Horse for dinner. Tom is taking the whole family to Duck Horse for dinner. That's not a another, bad See, there you go. Another brilliant <laughs> idea. Don't brilliant. have to mess up the house. I brilliant. Love it. And and you can go to Duck Horse for not a whole lot of money. And eat like a, oh yeah. my eat God. Like a champ. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good there. It's so good there. That yeah. mushroom soup I could eat with a straw. Yeah. I mean, I could just... <laughs> I agree with you. I, you know, a lot... You see, and the thing about that is that. people probably... I would never think... To order mushroom soup, right? Ever? Me right. either. People so. need to know about this mushroom <laughs> oh, soup because it for. is really oh. over the top over delicious. The top. It's like eating a steak. Oh, yeah. Like that's yeah. it has like you feel satisfied, like you ate a steak. 
and it's so fresh. And do you do you ever have the polenta that they the have polenta, there? The polenta, and because I'm fussy with my polenta. And the polenta is crispy golden brown on the outside, and then they have this beautiful like mushroom sauce that goes with it that oh, tastes yeah. very similar to the soup, but it's a little bit thicker, and then fresh spinach. And because like, I'm oh, Italian, I am very fussy with polenta. And they have very good polenta. And they have excellent polenta. polenta. <laughs> Polenta. Polenta. You know, oh, my mother used to say, the more you stir the polenta, the thicker it gets when people would be arguing in the house. <laughs> Stop stirring the polenta. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to say, I was going to talk about, uh, it's all women here, and you guys, I know you don't want to follow the uh, the, ba- the college basketball tournament. A so little bit. Well, anyway, the reason, I'm, I'm just going to bring it up briefly, because I'm really happy for my <laughs> nephew, BJ, who committed to, to uh, Syracuse, Syracuse next year, right. early admission to Syracuse. And so... They've gone on. They're 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 in the Sweet Sixteen, oh, okay. well. and so I went over to Felicia's house the other night. We had barbecued, unbelievable chicken wings. They're so good, and so we well, we won the game. We, Syracuse won the game, yeah. and we me, Barry, and BJ together. And we're like, oh, the next game is going to be Friday night. We'll we'll do this all over again. We'll let, you know we'll root for them. So I'm like, BJ, make sure you text me as soon as you find out what time the game is on Friday. I just get the. I get I, I so I looked it up myself the next day, nine forty p.m. start. Oh, yeah, because oh, aren't crazy. they out west? Oh. No, it's, it's in Chicago. The game is in Chicago hour. at nine forty oh, p.m. That's only one, one hour, hour, right? Nine forty p.m. Know. No, it's nine forty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Not no, I'm oh. oh. Chicago time. I, I so I texted BJ. I says BJ, I love you, right. but. There's right. zero chance I'm staying. I can stay right. away from that. I know. I don't know. Well, everybody's brackets are broken though. Well, the BJ's bracket is broken. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he had Syracuse going deep. Um, well, Syracuse is always a good basketball team. They are. They are. The yeah. Orange Men. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I follow sports. Very, ex- very. I know that's impressive. Very exciting for BJ. I'm happy yeah. for him. Um, so, so he goes off to college in the fall. Yes. Wow. So that's a college. Yeah. That's and wonderful. Oh, I is so exciting. Yeah. And he's not too far away. You know. I know. He can take the bus. You know, there's a bus. Hey, where do you guys just get you? Where I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Where do you guys get you when you know your Easter chocolate candy? Where Where do you go? I don't eat candy. Well, you get it for your kids, don't you? The grandchildren. Yeah. What? I do not get them candy because they get enough from right. other right. sources. Well, and like I sending a package up to Robin. I feel like you just right. you're, not, you're not saying it because you don't you don't want to. No, I don't. Them. I'm not a candy oh, person. Right. And I don't, I'm not a candy person. So either. I mean, okay. if I was going, I'd be going to Turtle Alley or or Tux or, or um, Nichols. Nichols and yeah. just I would eat the whole thing. Those marshmallow eggs and things like that. I could have the whole yeah. thing, but I'm not a big. I, I sweets make chocolate makes me crazy. I, so I, yeah. I I like chocolate, but I can't oh, eat yeah. chocolate. I love chocolate. Um, I go to Nichols and to Tux. Um, excuse me, Nick. I usually go to Nichols <laughs> and, and, Hallie, to Tur- and to Tally Turtle. at Turtle Alley. Turtle yeah. Alley. I, I, w- I would go to Tux if, you know, whenever I'm in Rockport, you know, if I wanted some but Tux is in Rockport or, Mag- or uh, they're, in Rock, they're in Rockport. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah, Tux is, yeah. wait, they're famous they for the, the sh- saltwater taffy. Yeah. yeah. yeah but they're they not have, really chocolate. No, place, they have it. wonderful homemade chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yes, it's very good. Oh, the cave has it too now. They make the, at Tux, they make these wonderful, um, uh, big circular discs of chocolate with nuts in it, and so you can have pecan one or pecan. Um, or not pecans, pecan, pecan. yeah, <laughs> what interphalactic, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, yesterday I filmed um. Haley making um, turtles at Turtle Alley, oh, so that was fun. Love. So I'm gonna, oh! just, it's just a little Insta, you know, it'll be just a little Instagram post. But it was really those are cute. so good. Yeah. And then I love Barbara at Nichols. She's a, just a wonderful, classy, classy lady. I, See, if I, went in I love, I love I the fact about Nichols that you, when you walk in there, not one little. St- Speck of that place has changed in the, it's since I've gone there for the first time when I was a little child, child to right yeah. now. Yeah. The same exact yeah. systems, the same exact like yeah. wrapping, the way they do it. It smells so good. It's, it's so crazy. Good. And children love to go in there. I mean, you know, imagine like. Tell Hallie too. Yeah. I mean, they're very well, cool. It's, like a, it, it's, it's not a penny candy store right. like we used to But have, imagine but like if you're, you no, know, coming, like say candy. you're coming for two months in the summer and you come every year with your family and you. Yeah, you make you know, that you, stop. You make that stop. But see, I don't, yeah. you know, like I said to Robin, 
she gets they get enough candy. Yeah. Well, from yeah, you know, every, you know, in, yeah. I wish I don't of, need I wish to, one of my kids' grandmothers did that. <laughs> yeah, well we I don't, but my mother didn't let us have it. Oh, yeah. My mother let us eat candy, yeah. and uh, my kids eat candy. And um, well, we we had candy in in moderation though when I was yeah. I mean, that was we were very. Um, it wasn't a huge thing. We had it was in moderate. I mean, we yeah. had an Easter basket. Sometimes yeah. I pick up my yeah. my daughters, and they're, and they they they're like, at the end of the day, they're just they haven't eaten, and they and they oh. and they little crabby. So I always try to have like a little piece of chocolate in the car. Yeah. Give well, them that. And it just gets bad. them to even. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not psycho. Yeah, yeah. and you know, chocolate well, you isn't bad. Right. And you know what you could also get. No, no, them. just a little hit yeah. sort of sugar because I could, you know, you know when what they're you like, could, they have low blood sugar, they're they're they get to be a little oh, chippy God, yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> when they put, when they Don't have that, they're like, they level what, right out and they're like, oh, and let's start laughing in t- five yeah. minutes. You know what? You could just have two bananas for them or two apples too. It's the same thing and it's healthy. So. And you know, my they're going to throw the bananas at me. They're going to hit me on the back of the head with the bananas. Right my grandchildren love the halos. The halos and the clementines. Yeah. I'll tell you something. Yes. If, I, if I showed up, my mother threw, uh, handed me a banana. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, well, my grandfather works for the golden ripe banana. Speaking of kids, uh, East Gloucester School is uh, has their performance April 1st and 2nd. Uh, Kim, you can yeah. say the dates. Yeah. But... Um, the, they're going to do the Tempest, right? Isn't which is awesome? kind of like a, a right. adult, it's a, it's adulty, very, uh, well, it's, very. Uh, it's the, very adult, but there's also Don very, Sarouf is uh, she's the director, director. and um, she, the, you can you know you can take any play like that and you know condense it and make it yeah. understandable to kids and stuff. It's such a classic story, so I think it's going to be awesome. That's pretty she, high she's level. Doing it, it's the weekend after Easter. And um, Friday, Saturday, and Monday, and we'll put the specific times up or link to their um, their page. Oh, good! I, I think I, I, I know a lot. Oh, of moms. I have the girls that weekend. I could bring them. Yeah, Mich- I know Michelle Kremen, uh, Martin Del Vecchio's Michelle is um, doing a, making. I stopped off to um, pick up something at their home, and she had her whole kitchen laid out with costumes, and oh, she yeah. was printing on them and making all these wonderful costumes. So it's a it's a huge endeavor by the community, and Dawn, I'm sure, is doing a magnificent job. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it's yeah. great when they do something above. Yeah, and you know, yeah. like a the, Shakespearean play. The, the play, the, cool. the, the show. Oh, it's not. Uh, it's not uh, some Disney performance yeah. of Frozen or right. something like that. Right. Yeah, right. the aim high. The aim high. Yeah. Love it. Well, and then they're, it's on the heels of the super, super success of The Lion King yeah. at the middle school. That was just... You know, like, everybody was phenomenal. talking about it, and I, I forgot. I forgot. They didn't, I don't know if they didn't send me the press release. We, we, put, yeah, we, we put, posted it. I put, I, think, some, yeah. I put some stuff up on. Yeah. About was I, I must have been in Mexico when it, when it yeah. was all yes, going on. Yes, it was on. last yeah. week, wasn't it? And, um, yeah, Damn, sometimes, I I see, so, sometimes I see something on Facebook, and if we haven't put it up, yeah. I'll just grab the flyer and put it on. But... um. They, you know what's so remarkable? Like people don't understand how hard this is to do this. They, because I've worked, I've um, uh, produced plays before where we have two casts. They have three separate casts, so everything is done in triplicate. Every costume, oh. every rehearsal. I mean, it's just phenomenal that they can do that, and that it's a very, very inclusive way of. And they have to pay for that too, don't they? Have to pay to have those plays. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. it's and it's not cheap. No, no, it's not cheap. So, no. you know, um, I mean, I know that when Burlington High used to put them on. No, when you when for the Lion King or the Sound of Music or whatever. Oh yeah, is, those are expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive to purchase the rights to pro- do the. Oh program. right, yeah, yeah, no, they say oh, so. Whenever we go there to cover it, um, they always tell me don't you can't put the video. Right. Of the songs, yes, right. right. uh, right. because they're, they're right. that's part of their arrangement, yeah. right. you know. Right. So yep. maybe that's why they do the Tempest so they can take the videos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone from Shakespeare is going to come get, come after you. Um, well, I suppose it's so many years old. You can, there is some. There isn't anybody who owns Shakespeare yeah, at this point. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Oh, unless, so. Unless somebody somebody might own the adaptation. Somebody could very well own the adaption. So, doing. I want, so I'm going to talk about this, and it isn't. This isn't. I'm going to say that right now. This isn't about politics. This is about uh, potentially about sexism. So, this uh, guy Joe Scarborough from NBC. Did you hear about this? No, but I know every, he used to have a show in Boston. Oh, right? did he? Okay. Yeah. So he 
Clinton, Hillary Clinton won, and he tweeted out, you know, won this election. Uh, when is that? Friday, March fifteenth. Right? A big, she oh, had a big yeah, night, right. swept Super or something Tuesday, like that, right. and right. crushed Bernie Sanders. Right. She had a big sweep. She had a big sweep that day or whatever, mm-hmm. and um, and so Joe Scarborough tweets out uh, to to Hillary Clinton, smile. You just had a big night. I guess you you know she didn't have a big smile on her face or something like that. And the feminists, you know, like, there was the big backlash, uh, you know, ladies, it's very important that you smile for Joe Scarborough. And then uh, Mashable wrote, at this point, men have to know better than to tell a woman to smile. Hillary Clinton had an incredible night during Tuesday's primaries, locking down Florida and seeing, sealing a surprise win in Ohio. But Joe Scarborough, host of MSNBC's Morning Joe, thought she could have acted like a little happier about it. Um, and there's, so I guess there was, it became a big thing. Right. That's you know, yeah, how the, the internet works and people, it's a runaway it's piling like on. A tennis guy. So here's the question for you guys. Uh, have, have you ever been out and about and a guy, you know, says, you know, geez, you're so, you know, you'd be, you'd be so much more pretty if you just smiled. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes. does it drive you up a wall? Um... No, it's just mildly annoying. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, I, doesn't, it really doesn't drive me up a wall. I can, it can be creepy, though, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you don't yeah. know the person. Yeah. It's, don't, you know, I. Right. It's it can be space, creepy. And by the way, I could be your mother. So, you know. Yeah, no. That, I, that, that I, type of. Interaction. Is yeah. I, it yeah, just it can make me feel uncomfortable. Um, I, The way I feel about it is this. I, and, I, and it goes back to. You know, I, I know the I know the feminists like they don't. You're not supposed to comment on in this day and age. You're not supposed to say comment about a woman if she looks pretty because they take that the wrong way. Well, actually, no. There was some someone said there was a study I saw and they asked a bunch of it was oh I think it was uh, Nicole wrote about this like if a, a guy says to a woman at a bar a bartender. Hun, or if the yeah, bartender right, right, says right, hun, right, right, you know, right, does it bother right. you if they say hun? Right. And and actually, it was it was very divided, yeah. like and and it was div- and uh, most of them said it depends on the guy. Yeah. If he's an attractive guy, I don't have a problem with it. Right. But if it's an old creepy guy, I have a problem with it. So like it's almost like reverse sexism right there because they don't mind right. the good looking guy saying it, but they don't like yeah. the the creepy guy saying it. To and them. you know, women say it to women all the time too. Like older women will say it to a younger yes. woman. I always used to say, right. you know, and and not having any ulterior motive at all, hun, you know, stuff like that. I, you know, just tr- yeah. trying to be pleasant. And it goes right. back to I think they who say it, is saying it. If you're at the yeah. gym and there's a guy over there that don't yeah. call me. Right. So, but um, in this case, I, but I, I often see, I remember a while, I have a friend, a, a good friend, who never had, it was never a, a dating scenario, she was always just a friend, and um, she's a beautiful, beautiful girl, but her face always rested in Naturally a frown. rested in Naturally a frown. Naturally rested, rested in a frown. And I knew her outside of, like, the way she interacted with me. She's a super nice person, super right. friendly person. It wasn't really, I'm not gonna say, she was, she was a nice person. And she had good intentions all the time. She wasn't a bitch, because there's people that wear the yeah, I'm yeah. a bitch as a badge of honor mm-hmm. and want you to know that they're, they, yeah. they're project as a yeah. bitch. But she wasn't trying to project as a bitch. She just, that's the way her, even though she was a beautiful woman, her face rested in a brown, frown. And I you know, I always thought to myself, I don't know if I ever said it to her, you know, you know, because I had that kind of relationship, I could have said that to right. her, and she wouldn't have taken it the she wrong way. Taken it geez, you know, you would be right. so much. More, you know, I think a smile on anyone, oh. man or woman, mm-hmm. is an attractive look, and, and it doesn't have to be sexist. Prevents wrinkles. It does. I think it probably Smiling. creates wrinkles. Probably. No, only smile lines is a big difference. When you frown, it can make you look a it lot older. You down. get yeah, it brings yeah. your face down. Yeah. So when you mm-hmm. smile, you get maybe smile lines. Cool. But that's go, a different thing. I'm going to go look in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's I look in the mirror from far away. <laughs> yeah. Go and see what's going on. If someone says to me, oh, you're very attractive, I say, well, thank my mother. I had nothing to do with it. 
This, you know, you know it's the, your well, mother the, and your the, father. The, 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 the thing that Joe Scarborough said seems so relatively minor compared to what like the guy in the tennis guy said. No, what Trump is saying. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? That's. I don't want to get into Democrat, yeah. Republican stuff. This isn't, this <laughs> no, isn't about won't. that. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking <laughs> about the, the the female aspect of it, like a guy saying to a woman in power, "Smile." Does that take away? Is that is that meaning? Is that trying to make her? Like her whole worth is if she's pleasant well, for for yeah, for see, the public. Yeah, does have that. I mean, she right. because th- he, she's the they're front not telling runner. Putin to smile. Right. Oh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, you know what I mean. They're not yeah, telling. Yeah, they don't tell they, the guy. They don't tell right. the guy to smile. Right. right. So maybe there is a point. But to you it, know, right? Joe Scarborough is a hardcore Republican. You know that, right? About him. Oh, yeah. so maybe that's <laughs> why. Okay, so the, maybe right. that's why they took such offense to it because it, yeah. it, it was. Or maybe to, why even said something like that. You know what I he mean? He could have like said, "I hope maybe you're happy he's for." You maybe, know? maybe he's demeaning. Maybe he's kind of being a little bit demeaning on a level there. So I, you know, see, I see. And so. it is. It's been going on for years. Remember when Marjorie Clapperud ran for governor? Now we're going back probably thirty years. And all they talked about was her hair. Yeah, well, she had well, hair. Talking, See, but they didn't talk about Frank Bellotti, who was also <laughs> running his long eyelashes. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. yeah. I think Gee, my I memory's think it, good it, today, but. It comes on the heels of people, you know, constantly, you know, there's always this dialogue about Hillary's hair or what she's wearing or right. whatever. You know what I mean? And, you know, it would be a lot easier if she could just wear a suit every day like men do, you know. And, Maybe she should. And, maybe and I she don't should think do that. Should, you know, I, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I don't. I just think, why do you even have to say that? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's. Yeah. Yeah. The guy I with know. the tennis. I know a guy. Really a guy. Well, well, I'll say this: as a guy, if you're a news commentator, yeah, I, I, maybe is he. Well, he's know. been in the business a long time. I know, time. but is he a news guy or is he like one of these? Morning show. Um, I think he's more of a commentator. He, I, I, not, a, not a news guy. Yeah, he's yeah he doesn't, not fair. But fair he's been doing this long more. enough to know yeah. that he. You, he well, that's the job. Yeah, that's he, the he job. Knew, if he's I not mean, a news he guy and he's he more doing. of I like a entertainment part of the of the news part thing, there maybe. He, he knew what he was saying. Yeah, he knew what he was saying. Yeah. He knew what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so right. okay. In right. that case, then uh, then he probably got what he deserved there. And you know what? And for him, he got notoriety. He for got it. notoriety. <laughs> so, That's so the we're, right. we're ta- You know, we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I do feel as if sometimes it's very condescending. To yeah. this day, in 2016, mm-hmm. you still... I think in all these cases, you know what it comes down to? It all comes down to, and, and, and I think a lot of these feminists, they won't admit to this, but I think it's true. It depends on... Who the person that's saying it to you is like when it comes down to hun and it comes down to a guy that's complimenting how you looks and everything else if it comes from someone and they won't say this that they don't de- well, deem attractive or or yeah, a thing well, there they get offended right. but if it's but but i'm gonna say a good 80 percent of them if it's someone that they find attractive they take the compliment and they and they don't and they don't second guess and it, it also is how people say it it's right. not you know, I always told my children, it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. You know, if you say it in a condescending way, right. it's more boss. Yeah, this guy here obviously was, it, now that I know that he's like, you know, has his leans to the right, mm-hmm. obviously that that was meant as a And you know, feminists, I mean, I burnt my bra in Harvard Square when I was in college. <laughs> you did? I did. Legitimately did. You're not yeah. saying you did, you did. I did it in Harvard wow. Square. Wow. When we had a... What year? Well, let's see, 1972? Wow. wow! I did. Done. So sometimes when I hear, so you don't wear your, we don't you you don't wear your feminism on your sleeve, like a lot of people do. I but you can see I raised four very strong girls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always went to war. Yeah, but you're very feminine. You're not like you know, oh no, you're not, you're not shoving feminism down no, people's throat. No, but you know I am very I think, uh, you know I'm careful yeah. about what I say, anyways, because mm-hmm. when you own a business, you got to be very yeah careful. yeah yeah. But I do feel sometimes like, ugh, don't do that. Don't call yeah. me hun. Don't, don't, yeah. don't do that. I don't know yeah. you. Right. You know, I don't know you. And there's certain people mm. that wouldn't even face me. Right. right. I think there's a lot. I think there's it's a, a friendship ton. too. That I mean, if I don't, I don't know somebody, don't call me hun. I don't know you. 
Kate has a problem with uh, people that are younger than her, women, even women saying like hun to yeah. her, yeah. like that if they're younger than her, it drives her up a wall for some yeah. reason. But young guys, yeah. my brother yeah. used to tell me, don't come around when I'm working because the guys all like you. Now my brother, you know, is a landscaper. And he goes, they're all Googling at you, so don't come <laughs> near me. And I'm like, well, so I'm attracting that age group? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think that I think feminism is that they have such they have a lot of they're doing such great work the feminists and stuff like that on, on a lot God. of different on a lot of different levels. But I think they're just with like any other group, there are the radicals that discredit them, and then there's yeah. a, but but, but yes. for, by yeah. and large they do good work and they and they bring in great topics to light and and you know the ceiling. The, Different disparity in incomes and stuff right. like that. Like, dude, overall, they're such a, they're doing such good things. And then I think that there's the ones that take, just like <laughs> there is in any group, the ones that take it too far, the extremists, mm -hmm. you know, right. just in any, hurt, their, mean, hurt, their, it, hurt their cause. It's more. 2016. We live in the United States and we've never had a woman president. Right. Or a woman vice president. I, right. yeah, and Shirley I'm Chisholm sure. ran for president, what, way back? Way back. Way back. Oh, really? I never mm -hmm. knew that. I never yeah. knew that name. And yeah. Didn't, well, didn't Gerald, and she was an African American. A Geraldine um, Ferrara. Ferrara. She ran for president. Didn't she run I, for I vice president? I remember her name. Right. Hmm? Chisholm must have been before her. Shirley Chisholm was probably, oh my God, maybe the 60s? Yeah. And she was yeah. African American. Huh. Gee, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. You know the, have old. you ever heard the name? I've heard the name, but I didn't know she ran for president. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. And God forbid a woman cries. Yeah. Know, See, that's true. that right. pisses me off because right. if right. crying is a sign of strength, by the way. Right. If John Boehner can cry oh God, with his orange tan, right. then it's okay. Right. But it's be, it, the speaker crying, knows, by the way, is a sign of strength. Just to, yeah. But you know, you think so? It is because you get it out and you're done. There you go. Um, <laughs> now that we've done a whole psychological I've, thing of exactly. feminism, uh, I've been. Uh, I've been snoring like I always. I've always snored, but I've but with my <laughs> but with my winter weight. You snore more when you. I have, I, 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 I I snore worse, you know, like the sleep sleep apnea thing, yeah. the, oh. the, like the. Because I read that men gain weight in their um, yeah. in their throat, yeah. and that's w and that helps. Um, Do you have a CPAP machine? Well, but but when Tom lost when Tom lost a lot of weight, he stopped snoring as much. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot better. I have to. I I gotta go on. I gotta go on a diet, and it has nothing to do with. I'm I'm eating actually less than I normally uh, that I eat in the in the summer in the fall when I'm, but I'm just way you less notice. active. You're way less active. So when, less active. once you start up again, don't you think it'll just come off? It will come off, but in the meantime, poor Kate has to, you know. Lay Does she want to put a pillow over <laughs> your head? She wants to you know, suffocate me. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes Rick snores, but I got him the breathe rights. Oh, it does. Because he help? gets more stuffy in that. They, ha they help a little bit. Because yeah. you want to put a pillow over someone's head. If you sleep on your head. side, does it? it yeah, it, you're yeah. still snoring. She, she, yeah. she give me, she give me the elbow and put me on the, <laughs> the. I mean, she gives, she vicious too. She gives oh. me, bam, bam! I'm like, what was that for? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's like, get on your side right now. <laughs> Off your back. I'm murder you. Um, it, you know, so I've seen, but so the thing was like, so I saw what, you, you know the. If, so if you, I'm talking to my doctor about it, you know, like, you know, what, what can I do? You know, what I'm saying, hey, he goes, oh, we can do a sleep study, and you come in yeah. and you're in there, and then yeah, they study the you, and, you do, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and it's like, well, you it's gonna, be, it's like a, it's like a, it seems to me right. like it's gonna be like 45 hours of my <laughs> life, <laughs> of, you know, of laying down and like, you know, well, someone's gonna make, like observe me sleeping and stuff no, like that. They want to make sure you're breathing. <laughs> Oh, I, I can tell you what you I got. I know what it is. You don't have to tell. We don't have to do waste right. my time. You're not falling asleep during the day. But I mean, if the if if oh. the if the result is is the, have you seen what these CPAP machines? Yeah. How ridiculous you look. They like don't CPAP look like Darth Vader as much anymore. But they're still ridiculous. Yeah, but it does help people. Feel. At at one point, at what point though do you just like have sleep in different bedrooms? Does oh. Does, well, oh no! Does it, does You're too young does, for that. Does sleeping wake you up? Does you know, well, it wakes me up when I get an elbow in my right. gut. But it doesn't. Yeah, but it's but not you, breaking, it, waking it, you up because you can't breathe. Right. It's not. Oh, wow, I you, sleep so like a baby. You don't have apnea. <laughs> but not Kate. <laughs> okay. So but if you had apnea, that's a very serious condition. You can have a heart attack. 
That's why people... The rabbit had sleep apnea. I mean, he's gordo anyway. He's like a big, you know, big 2,000 pound yeah. suckling pig. <laughs> I love seeing his belly, by the way. He's awesome. hilarious. But I mean, but I... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I am not going to wear one of those, th- yeah. those things. No, like, yeah. you might as well throw your your well, love you life out the window. Yeah, yeah, you get, yeah. If you get like, if you lay down next to your 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 your, your beloved I don't know in one of those things, how are you ever? Go- how is that person ever going to be attracted to you again? <laughs> Wait, Wait, you got the mouth guard on. You got the eye patch thing. I don't, I don't know crazy. what they look. I don't know what they look. They like. look like um. Oh my God! It's just like, it's it's this big thing that straps in around your head. Oh my gosh! And it's just like people with that disease, so that disease can kill you. Right. It's not. When you say disease, a- apnea is a disease that can. It's a, it's a structure of your way your your, your, you your body is. I don't apnea, say you can have a heart attack. Right. Well, you don't have this. apnea because you'd be falling asleep during the day. Because that means you don't sleep at night. And you're gonna, you know, you'll lose weight. So right, that's my it, plan. And it'll go. It'll. You'll be back to anybody. Oh. I'm like, for someone like that. So I, uh, so before the podcast started, Kim, uh, Kim was here, and we always go over our show notes. And one of the show notes, Kim went to the the meeting, the Ten Pound Island Past, Present, Future uh, meeting at, and it was at the uh, what do you call it? Culture, the, the Rocking Rocking Cultural, Cultural, Cultural Center. Center with you know Karen Richterbin uh, um, and Scott Memhart. We you, you, you did they ask for this meeting, Scott? Or, or Scott Memhart showed showed up. So we talked. So Kim no, said, to, "Wait, wait, wait. wait let me back up. Meeting. Let me back up." Okay. So we, we were talking about it, and Kim said there was a very spirited debate or what at this right, meeting right. that Scott was at. So immediately, I texted. I text Scott. I said, "Scott, can you show up for the podcast?" <laughs> we taped. We taped forty-five minutes of the podcast, and luckily we prolonged it enough that Scott could actually come <laughs> and and talk about. Sure. Uh, I had to let the chickens out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have chickens. Chicken. I, I was up late last night. It took me a little while to. Uh... No, do you really have chickens? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, the, we could talk about that too. Uh, James, 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 and Anna Eves just got a chicken coop. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, they, they're about to get their chickens. A lot of people have chickens. It's getting to be a thing. It's well, eight eight are are I'm, I'm down to eight of them. I had twenty at one point. Oh, really? Holy yeah. Jesus! But yeah. Through attrition. And... Now, th- now, <laughs> there is a, there is such thing as a. Oh, what do you cook them? You cooked it. You ate the chickens. <laughs> I'll leave that for Kim. <laughs> oh no, uh, the coyotes eat the chickens. Right? Oh okay, yeah. No, we don't have coyote problem here. So <laughs> well, they're out on Ten Pound Island. That's right. <laughs> There's no food. Just rats. Oh Jesus. Richard was great last night. His wife Rosenfeld, unbelievable. So wait, 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 wait. So so yeah. Well, okay, we'll get around to that. Okay. So, do you, can you explain about the how the the term the pecking order came about? Because I know this from. Uh, my girlfriend Kate's father has chickens, yeah. and there's one chicken that's the nasty chicken, and he pecks at all the other chickens. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the, the problem gets when you add a, a new flock to an old flock because right. the new flock are uh, second-class citizens, and they right. will get pecked, and they can be they can draw blood. Right, so it's ideal to get like all your chickens all at once. This is Laura. No, I, I, I try and add another half dozen every two years just yeah. to right because of the keep them laying. Right. <laughs> oh, because they want the fresh meat. No. What do you mean? <laughs> What's he with the meat? <laughs> no, I mean the, the chickens want the, the, the to get you know, the they, new they, chickens they, to they, mess around with. They slow down on their productivity after a little while. Yeah. Oh yeah, interesting. All right, well we're gonna get back to this the ten pound island thing. So who called for the uh, thing? Did Karen call for it? Karen yeah. Ristaban oh. asked me to host a meeting at the Rocky Neck Cultural Center on the subject of ten pound island and what was being proposed or not proposed. Mm-hmm. So, can you, okay, from your understanding, what is being proposed? I don't know. Right. You, d- right. you There's no, there's no official know? proposal. Steve, Steve Douglas and Tiger Marston came to the Waterways Board with a written proposal, which was some notes on a piece of paper, for a 10-pound island recreational area. And I think they would like to propose installing a couple of seasonal floats out there so that it's a little safer to disembark. The old harbor shuttle used to just lay down a pontoon and you roll up your cuffs and wade ashore oh, okay. for two hours. Oh. That's what my kids did when they were 
know, the Harbor Shuttle. The it, Harbor so Shuttle. at one point, people yeah. were using this, and it was mm -hmm. a city thing. I, I think uh, Andy Dominic ran it one summer, and I think Paul Frontiero ran it one summer. I think they had Cata underwriting because it was like three bucks for a day all around the harbor all day long. Yeah. You could, you could stop at Rocky Neck, you could stop at Harbor Loop, you could go out to Ten Pound Island, way to shore, take a picnic, which a lot of right. people did. Right. If, you, if you didn't have your own boat, that, right. and one of the topics last night that came up and up and up again was accessibility, and whether it's just for locals or if you don't have a boat, if you don't have a skiff or a kayak, is there a, a, a comfortable way of getting out there that's a, a available for both locals and visitors? Right, and there isn't if you don't have a boat. There, there isn't. There is. And, right. and that got into some of that hot topic last night about exclusivity and, mm. uh, you know, people don't want it. It was a great image of making Ten Pound Island into Wickersheet Beach on a hot Sunday afternoon oh, in the geez. summer with beer and uh, or, or debauchery. Or, and or, or, or Misery Island, uh, yeah. Cocktail Cove. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. And, and I, uh, you know, certainly not, all the people there, when it was said and done, they, they, less is more. And we try. We tried to give people a sense of what's been there in the past, and the fact that it was a thriving fish hatchery for mm -hmm. 65 years. They were raising cod. They were raising lobster spawn. And lobsters too, right? Lobster uh, that it was. A, it was an air force base. It was a, they, the air. The uh, air force uh, did runs against prohibition in the 20s off of Ten Pound Island. I mean, the mm -hmm. photographs that show the installation of the. the oh, we posted the, them on the blog. The real estate is incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And now you just have a few of those ruins left. Yeah. I. Uh, Okay, my two cents from what I well now I don't really I still I have more more questions than when we started. Mm -hmm. That's good. So so right. the I guess for the people I think you put this out there and you don't, and, people, and there's no idea what they're even yeah. proposing it would lead to people we, we, freaking we, out. Right? We, we asked people because I mean there were probably a hundred people there. It's amazing. Oh, it was packed. There was standing room. And people night. left because yeah. they couldn't get in through the door, and we didn't have enough chairs out. But right. we did ask people to fill out a note card and ask answer three questions. You got the questions there at the bottom. Oh, so if you didn't okay. have a chance to speak, you could at least you know, weigh in on your point of view uh, and your that's, concerns. That's a great plan. I think. And and, and, and I have probably forty uh, note cards, but I haven't gone through them yet. But. Mm. You know, basically, most people in the room, of the 100 people, have been to Ten Pound Island at least once. Mm -hmm. A few of them haven't and sort of felt left out and jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, people really like it pretty much the way it is, by and large. And there was some talk about how to make it more accessible for quote-unquote passive recreation. And there was a lot of concern about maintaining it as a little jewel of conservation Mm -hmm. land out there where the birds can nest undisturbed. Mm -hmm. right. The egrets are out there too. So and, and Laurel oh. Tarantino gave an incredibly heartwarming presentation with detailed photographs and very detailed description of all the different species of birds and wildlife and uh, you know all the nests that she's seen out there and how easily those could be damaged. Right. And people were just in awe. She was very moving. Uh, no. Talking about the natural reserve that is out there right, right now, because you know, is it a reserve? Well, well, you, it, so you it, put it, those it, words there, and, it's, it's, and, and it evokes and it evokes a thing where there, there's no well, it's like Audubon already. If it isn't Audubon, it's not a preserve. It's not Audubon. It's, not a it, it's city owned land. There's no conservation right. uh, restriction on it at, at this time. It was a thriving economic base, but it is a city asset. Right. Hmm. Well, um, most of the birds that nest out there are like mallards, right, and. Canadian geese, and they're not they're not rare species of birds. And what will eventually happen is, as if if nothing ever is done to the island, you know, if if no maintenance is ever, uh, uh, if it if if it doesn't have any kind of maintenance whatsoever, what will eventually happen is it will become a forest mm -hmm. out there, and then a forest will not be an ideal nesting place. So if you want to preserve it for, as a nesting place the best thing to do is to maintain it to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it will eventually um, keep evolving. It hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't, it's only taken about 65 years for it to go from um, having, you know, being very, fairly clear, yeah. right, to what from it is. Photos, There's a from lot, those photos, yeah. there. a lot to, of structures. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. And, look, and now it's covered with shrubs it and, mm -hmm. and, sh and small trees. Eventually it'll be Bigger trees. You know, one of the one right. of the very clearly expressed concerns was if you make it more accessible to the public, uh, who's going to manage it? Right. Who's going to maintain uh, the, tra the trash collection? Yeah. Right. right. And and uh, you know, yeah. where do people go to the bathroom if they're out there? And, and if if, uh, if if it's a public asset, how do you make it reasonably accessible? 
to people who have disabilities? And right. those are some Keep tough questions. Tough questions. I'm going to read the, uh, the note card questions that you, you, you want and, to And we'd love more people to weigh in on those. I yeah. think Ray, Ray Lamont was there all night, bless him. I think he's going to be writing an article tomorrow about it. Okay. He got a sense of the controversy. He talked to people afterwards, you know, uh, Jimmy, T, Jimmy T and, 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 Pat, and Patty did interrupt Steve LeBlanc and Karen Tibbetts and challenge them about, you know, this conspiracy thing. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. Gloucester, right? Eventually we all calmed down and we talked pretty oh, civilly. Wow. That's when you're out there on a Sunday, like I kayak out there, there's a lot of people out there. So the argument of not having hmm. accessibility, it's still very accessible. If, if you, you have, have a, your kayak. If, if you, you have, have a kayak, kayak. a rowboat. Or boat, somebody you uh, can rent a kayak, kayak from. And also like, there's also those... Paddle um, boards, skidoos. Not, skidoos, yeah. Those kind of things. Um, Nowadays, with a stand-up paddleboard, every, like yeah, you know, there's right. so many different ways to get out. Here, are the, I'm gonna let me read the questions that okay. there were that um, that you were looking for answers for. The no card questions. Uh, how many times have you personally landed on Ten Pound Island, and how did you get there? Number two, how is the island special, important to you now? Third question, future vision. What do you hope the island might be for the community some ten years from now? Uh, my thoughts are that um, I have I, I, I on both sides of it I, I can see so so one side of it is mm -hmm. I totally agree with the if you build you know another we, is another thing that we have to pay and to maintain I totally agree with that and and, and it, what drives me crazy as a waterfront property owner is you know they always talk about like you know having a place to come and land for transient do do boaters in Gloucester, but we have, <laughs> you know, Acres. you have all this all this mm -hmm. waterfront that you know they That's that decaying. if you, right. that right. that if they, they I I feel like they're always scared to death to let the prop private property owner do something like exactly what they're talking about doing. Right. But the, but when it comes down to the city, oh, we can do it, but we're not going to let you do it. So that mm -hmm. drives me up a wall. Um, number two, but I do like the idea of people using it, but I, I, I am, cons I'm a little concerned about it becoming like Cocktail Cove and, mm -hmm. uh, and Beverly Farms, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to what people may envision it being just kayakers, uh, out oh, there. Nice. And, and, and if you put a, an elaborate float system out there with, with slips and you have cigarette boats and 18 foot Makos and kids out there going out there to drink at night. That's one part, you know, I can envision it that way, but then I can also envision it as a beautiful way to spend an afternoon mm -hmm. rowing a dory out there like Jimmy mm -hmm. does all the time in Laurel and or a kayak or anything else. Awesome. It'd be fantastic. But And having a safe and easy way to and, disembark. And having a safe and easy way and, to and disembark. It comes down to having somebody that's in charge of managing it. Mm -hmm. And one of the really good example, we talked a lot about different islands around the North mm -hmm. Shore. Mm -hmm. Out at Thatcher's, there's a very active mm -hmm. yep. public yep. group, the Thatcher's right. Island Association, that right. manages the island. Manage and it. They, they right. collect funds for people that land there, and they use those funds to mm -hmm. maintain it, mm -hmm. and they're careful about it. And mm -hmm. you know, so one of the concerns was if people go out there, you need someone eventually to pick up after them. And yeah. how, how's that paid for or compensated for? And different people had different ideas. But do you think that That's by having idea. more people out there, sometimes people are cleaner? I mean, because when I go out to Ten Pound Island, it's fairly clean. I mean, I do pick up, hmm. but the disembarking is can be extremely weird if there's a lot of kayaks, rowboats. Um, isn't there? Isn't there a, a landing pad where it's kind of almost like a beach? It is a beach there. Yeah. But there's like stuff sticking out of the water, um, hmm. like it may be an old piling or something. That if we, like you said, you have to maintain that or there's going to be another piling coming up and there's going to be and there's a lot more brush out there than there were when I first started. I, 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 oh, really? I only just have, I only have in a few short years you've yeah. seen more brush. I only have one more point that I'd like to make and, and this goes you know I'm on both sides of it so the, right. other, so the right. other point that I'd like to make is I just came back from Mexico I was in Tulum with the ruins. Right. Now, these are sacred ruins you know what I mean right. and everything else and they have there's so there are I don't know if there's I don't know if there's 5,000 10,000 people a day going around these ruins and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And they have uh, like wrought iron stakes in the ground with, 
you know, uh, rope yeah. going through them because there is, now these are, you talk about the species out there are not protected species. Mm -hmm. They're talking about the uh, landing areas for protected turtles mm -hmm. where the right. turtles come up right. and actually lay yeah. their eggs and they very, very... It's very serious. It's very serious right. business. They and they have, right. this is a huge right. international, Effort. you know, uh, right. sp uh, space right. that people come in and right. use, right. public use. And, and despite and, that... And despite that, they, they have, have people... Nice they have a, it's protected right. and people well, respect if, it. If there were, if there were tr for example, if on... Ten Pound Island. If there were a few trails and not elaborate trails, just like the usual, you, just the usual mass Audubon, you know, trail through the woods, you would keep people probably on the trails because there's so much poison ivy mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. People wouldn't want to venture too far off of the trails, and the birds wouldn't nest on the trails. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. The birds wouldn't well, create like their nests. What nest they did at the George's trails. Island, Bumpkins Island, um, what's the other one? Grape Island, you know, Spectacle Island out in Boston Harbor. Mm -hmm. At one time, George's Island was not as nice as it is because I remember going out there because there's ruins there from the Civil War and the Lady in Black and all the kind of cool stuff. But what they did out there, they, they did put a ramp or a float so the boats can go out there, but it's, it's very controlled. You know, you don't... They have somebody there maintaining it. I, I think um, the main thing, the, the number one thing for this project, is seeing as that meeting was so, you know, there's obviously people feeling very passionate about it. For the people that want to do this, to put something forward of more concrete of ideas of what they're looking to do. Right. right. And so the people, you know, may, it may dispel people's fears. Right. Or right, because you know, because so, I mean, everybody imagines the worst. Right, so many. Mm -hmm. It's like people have said to me, "Oh, is they're going to build Disneyland out there?" And I'm like, "No, that isn't." Well, no, you know, and, hey, and, if they didn't put any plans out, right. if they well, don't we, have any ideas. Last night at Rocky Neck was just a public community forum trying to right. get some ideas out there. Uh, Mayor Safathi has invited people to come to her office Thursday afternoon for an open house there. Mm -hmm. Again, just to talk Oh, I about wondered if that was still going on. Sure. Um, wait, wait okay. when was that now? Okay. Thursday. Thursday. Thursday at, I think, 5.30ish? Yes. Yeah, so and I, Thursday I, is the night that City Hall is open late. Right. I put it down. I put, did a post about it a while ago. So yeah. at the time, it's, I think it's at 5 or something. And um, the... This is specifically, Safathi has invited people to come to her office with their thoughts and concerns about 10 Pound Island. Right. This Thursday, sort of an open house, open office at the mayor's office, mm -hmm. uh, 5.30 to 6.30. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for me, my concern would be keeping it clean because I'm right. obsessed. But, you know, yeah. safety is an issue. But if you're in the harbor, you're already in a line of traffic with whale watching boats and, you know. Well, let, let me ask you this, Scott, because when a mom said to me, um, well, you know, we love it because our kids can just kayak from Niles Beach over, and we don't have to worry about power boats and things like that. But there, there are. But then the my question was, I mean, I think like if there were a float there, you could land there safely any time of year, right? Like you could go there in March and April, and you know. from what I heard from Tiger and Steve Douglas. It's very they hard. were only proposing a temporary seasonal float, float. Okay. that might be there from May through October. Oh, okay. But otherwise, just like they found out at Thatcher's Island, it won't last. Okay. It, it'll be destroyed. Yeah, it'll be winter. destroyed. Mm -hmm. okay. So they, they wanted a, a simple, okay. temporary float that they yeah. could offload. But the way the Harbor Shuttle worked before was it just laid down a, a ramp, yeah. right. and you rolled up your, your cuffs, and you right. waded ashore with your picnic basket Easy. or whatever. Mm. Right. Two hours later, you got back on again. Right. Beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry, but Scott, the Thursday, 5.30, May Safathia's thoughts and concerns about 10 Pine Land at City Hall? Or yeah, her office? Or the mayor's office. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we should, we, we're going to put this on here. It's gonna, they're not going to have enough room in that office. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll write it down that way, she and if she wants to change it, she can change it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm just reading one of the note cards. I got like 30 or 40 note cards last night that people filled out with those questions, and this is a good summary one. It says, satisfy all. Two trips per day with a shuttle, guided tours, educating, children and learning, tourists satisfied, no docks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a good compromise. Hmm. But touring Ten Pound Island, there is a lot of poison ivy in the back. I mean, you have to do the outskirt. You can't The only place that's worse for, worse for poison ivy is, uh, what's the one off Good Harbor? 
Rust oh, Island. Oh, yeah. Rust Island. Salt, <laughs> Salt, Salt Island. Salt Island. Salt Island. Salt Island. Poison Ivy there is yeah. a 10. You can you know, wait yeah. out there when the tide is really low. And the, the they look like a bunch of people going into some sort of... It's steep. Weird thing when you look at Good Harbor and they're walking out to Salt Island. Well, you know, Sumac and Poison Ivy. Oh, yeah, I don't go out there. It's really um, bad out there. Mass Audubon has a very good way of dealing with um, Poison Ivy and Phragmites where they um, inject... Um, an herbicide directly into the soil so yeah. that you don't kill all the other wildflowers right. around it. And that's how they've ma managed to get f get rid of a lot of the Phragmites, for example. Um, What's a Phragmite as opposed to a poison ivy? It's a marsh grass. It's this, t you know, invasive. That, it's a very tall marsh grass with a big feathery frond. Yeah. You see it. It's is that is, you, is that off a of hot street when you're yeah. looking towards yes. uh, mm -hmm. that's what that stuff yes. is? Yeah, yeah, you see the clock. So why do they want to get rid of that? Phragmites is incredibly invasive, so it spreads and spreads and spreads, and it chokes out other um, every other plant, every other, uh -huh. um, and then it eventually sucks upon dry, yeah. sucks a marsh right, dry. Right, right, yeah. You see those in right. marshes, and, right. and yeah. uh, right. probably right. kills the ecosystems. Right. You remember they did that? It was I think it was one of the WPA projects when they carved out those channels. Those lines, and yes. we've, we've yeah, done we've this on the blog that. before right. about how, yeah. so to and restore they these, black to black beach. they restore these ecological systems, uh, get yeah. salt water up into these yeah. marshes where right. it wasn't before. And I bet, imagine a big part of the problem is the Phragmites. Well, the Phragmites are like, like, for example, in Niles Pond, they've done a really good job of, it used to, like I have old film footage of the whole berm just covered with mm. Phragmites, and now it's back to, um, you know, a stock of um, pussy willow here, a stock of pussy willow here. So that's really helped. All these these these, uh, these Audubon people, they they almost like they they're like ninjas. They're, I never <laughs> see them, but they're you know they're out there doing their thing. But they're like right, uh, they're true. ecological ninjas. And, and, and the, the mayor, I didn't really stress this last night. I don't think anybody brought it up, but the mayor's office has asked. I don't even they even contracted with Mass Audubon to do a study of the wildlife oh, on Ten Town yeah, Island, and they're, they're waiting. From Jack Clark and Mass right. Audubon to get get back an assessment of what's out there and how it could best be preserved and protected, oh, awesome. and whether it's special or common. You know, right. whether we're talking right. about blackbacks and rats or whether we're talking about <laughs> you know right. something right. something special, special whether they're right. eiders or egrets or whatever. Mm -hmm. egrets. I know Laurel had commented um, a number of years ago that the black crown night herons nest out there. Yes, they but they nest every you know they nest yeah, on Niles Pond and yeah. they're near the, good the, harbor the too. The population I is of um, black crown night herons was almost um, was almost completely extirpated from Massachusetts and now it's we see them all the time. Though. Yeah, well, people because they quark so much, they have this very loud quark. People didn't like them like that, so they used to shoot them to oh, get them geez. out of there. You know, they're yeah. such a cool bird, <laughs> right? They're such a yeah. cool bird, and can you imagine all of them quarking together? It sounds <laughs> kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, so now does the does the Audubon here's, here's a question, my cynical mind. Does the Audubon Society have a vested interest in saying because you know they want to save everything, uh, or, or maybe they don't? Saying, oh yes, everything is, you know, right. these are these are this is a place where you shouldn't have anything because they want the more that they can get under their control, the barrier. Well, I think or not. I, I mean, I don't no, know. I think is, that a, is, that a, is that a legit question? Yeah, yeah it's more preserving. It's a, it's a legitimate question, but yeah. I, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think so. I it's, think it's more of an. I think it's generally an altruistic organization. The Audubon does so many worthwhile, wonderful things. I don't, you know, I don't think there's any ulterior motive. I don't think you have no. to worry about that. I mean, when you go out to Eastern Point, you know, they've tried to preserve what it was, not stop. Well, you know, well, a, that that was that restoration was actually done by Eric Hutchins at NOAA. That yeah. restoration of the um, of the beautiful marsh there. Yeah. That at the very end by the yeah. lighthouse. Yeah, that was done. And by there's paths there. I've never. Have you ever gone through the yeah. paths? Well, the, the paths aren't really very marked. You just have to, you know, find the flattest rocks. And yeah, exactly. Have yeah. you ever walked walk up, up yes. there? Yes. Yeah, all the time. Are they? Are they? Yeah. Are, they have, are they maintained walking paths no. or the? the yeah. They They're probably don't want to. No, they don't want you to go walks and you walk for, up to. For, the... Further down, there is along the coast. It's not a maintained path no. at all. There's poison ivy everywhere. 
And um, but it's right across from the entrance to the lighthouse. I remember there was a sign there. Yes, yeah. and you've got there is a little path on that going that direction. But so it's very along, rocky. along the ocean, no. Yeah. But if you say you park at the lighthouse yeah. and then you walk down the road, there is a lot of little path in mm-hmm. through there. I think Bill but O'Connor it, used to mention that he used to go. He used yeah. to There's go some go beautiful there. birds on the other side. Uh, when the, you go on the coast side after you okay. walk the rocks. This I bet you this time of year, you see a lot of people on the back shore, the bird watchers right now, because with the tail end of that yes. February migration. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know? there are a lot out there. And, uh, so you yeah. see all the, because we're the stopover, because we stick out into the ocean. Yeah. So, so the stopover for the really cool there's a, there's uh, funky a lot birds. There's a lot of good funky birds out there right now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll have, have to um, go out there today. Yeah, we have redheads. We have a little pair of redheads over there. Right What's a redhead? Now. Redhead duck is just this beautiful, beautiful duck with a brilliant cinnamon red head. Mm. And we've had a little pair there. They, they must be getting ready to leave soon. Right. We've had a lot of buffle heads yeah. this winter, tons of buffle heads. They're fun. They're so cute. They're so them. cute. And they make the a ibis, the black ibis. Those are over the Clock's Pond, right? Yeah. The, green, no, the green, glossy. The, the glossy. Yes, the glossy. glossy. Uh, the I gloss, no, glossy, glossy ibis. Ibis, yeah. I, had the, I got pictures of those last year. I remember. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Because I go to Clark Pond a lot. So Scott, what's the next step for this for this for this proposal and stuff? What, like what what do you like what people should should go to the mayor's office if they have a big time Thursday, concerns and, yeah. and night. voice their opinion. The more the merrier. Are you going to be there Thursday night? Probably not. Yeah. I have a uh, we have a city council meeting with the school committee. Okay. So. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm clean was, city. I'm hoping to go. I think I think there'll be additional community forums and discussions yeah. about it, and at some point somebody will try and coalesce all this conversation into an, an actual proposal and we can, we can respond to it. But right now, there's nothing on the table. As Jim Destino and the mayor have said, you know, people are overreacting to mm-hmm. the threat or the perceived threat of a specific plan. But, you know, there's some things that have been talked about. But That's it. Yeah. yeah. And it gets out of control sometimes, you know. Well, well, it's it's not people, a, people feel like they've been hoodwinked before and they're, you know, this, this is Gloucester, right? And you do... <laughs> There is a, a, a worry of, because it's a small island. It's not very big. I don't know. I was, I don't know. We talked about this earlier, too. Like, I, like we're looking at the map of how many miles of coastline. Like, there really isn't a place, other places for people to, to well, like Jones are, Creek and everything. You know what There's it is? There's a places to put a kayak. Because, it's an island. because, because you're because on an island, island Joe, it's and the, you're eating your lunch, and you look at the city. It's also the the, the romanticized. It's romant, an it's island awesome. is romanticized. It's Captain's it's courageous. Right. It's uh, you know right. Gilligan's Island. That's, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Swift Family Robinson. Right. Yeah. I'm abandoned. I'm I'm marooned on an island. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking, and it's nice. I'm looking forward to reading that book, the um the little Margaret Wise Brown. Margaret book. Wise Brown. Yeah. I have to go track it down at the bookstore. Yeah. yeah, Google it. <laughs> little island. We yeah. have our own little island. Yeah. It was it was pretty funny in in a sense. I mean it's it's typical Gloucester, but there was so much passion last yeah. night at well, our community that's... meeting about this little island, yeah. this little yeah. gem of an island. Some people yeah. have never been there. They just like looking at it, right. and it becomes to represent something special to them. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've never been there. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. I've, I've, yeah. I mean, I... Kayak out there from Rocky Neck or from Pavilion Beach? Or? I just feel like we got so many... We already have so many... <laughs> so many... <laughs> I've really asked, like, this is the only place you can go, but, like, Gloucester, Rockport... Essex, like there's a million places you can go already, and I always, and I also feel like we have stuff that we needs maintaining right now that isn't maintained. Like the the Legion building is falling down, the hot Sergeant House is falling down. Again, you, you, you know what I mean, and and uh, you know what I mean. It's I need, just like, I need do we need for more the places? Walk. Huh? I need funding for yeah, the harbor Yeah, give more money for the for the harbor walk, and I feel yeah. like I don't know. I love Steve Douglas, and I love Tiger Marston, so. I don't know. Maybe there's maybe I, there's I thought, a compromise I thought, in there. I thought Steve, to his credit, did a really calm, thoughtful presentation. He was sensitive to people's concerns last night. He sat down. He, he was good. I mean, he, he, people people were accusing him of capitalizing on it to make a living. Oh, I don't know God, how much of a living he's making, but he's offering a service from my point of view. Forbid. <sighs> uh, we had this conversation <laughs> about God <laughs> forbid. Look yeah. at how well he's yeah, done with the shuttle. I love the shuttle. It's very low impact. It's it's wonderful. The shuttle has become a monster. Imp- like you see, awesome. it goes by your place. 
like five years ago, there was a handful of people. Now, all every time it goes by, there's a ton of people using that. And they do the parade of sales and the school yeah. festival. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll reach out to Steve Douglas and have him come in on the next podcast, and we can have him talk about because the more information yeah. we get, the more just we can. Yeah, that would be really good. Yeah, that would. Yeah. Be true. And, and the, the other one who was very articulate, and the, the, the mayor and Jim Stastino have sort of positioned as their spokesperson is Karen Tibbetts, yeah, I think who's, who was on this ad hoc recreational boating committee, and yeah. she's on the Waterways Commission. I she was, was out I there was, with her kayak. I was there for her part, oh, and I thought she was very articulate. You did say that, yeah. too, yeah. 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 All right, well. Uh, One more. What's that? The oh, the, 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 the art and schoolhouse in Magnolia. Oh, yeah. Which can, are you? Did you sign up no, for? No, I didn't. You're such a banana head. I, I told you. It's such, such a banana head. head. <laughs> Donna and I. Donna and I. We, we, I already picked I up your big photo. I, Thank you. It's yeah. so easy for me to to license my images and then, or if somebody wants to buy a print, to have to run around and mat and frame things is just drives me crazy, and I just don't have time to. It's do so it. fun though. It's so fun. It's a it's a great I, crowd that goes to that schoolhouse. Yeah, I there's wanna, a lot of good. And it's cheap. It's only thirty dollars. I know. I want to come. I'll come. I'll support everybody. Yeah. It's April eighth, 9th, and tenth. And next year, I'll, I'm good. Next year, I'm going to be more prepared with my photos. It's so easy. Right. It's so. Easy. I can't wait. Right? I'm so excited. Right. It me. starts um Friday night. Uh, from six to nine, there'll be food. Okay. So when there's food, people will people come. People will come. Right. And then Saturday <laughs> you know nine to people. five, and then Sunday ten to noon. Okay. Scott, so you have you heard that my theory about you know we, we had the gallery, no, and EJ had the gallery down in uh, on Rocky Neck, so we had you know we'd have the mug ups and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. and we'd have openings to you know different people, <laughs> and and it was hilarious. it's hilarious that there are you, you'll see a pattern of certain people when they know that there's going to be wine and 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 food and stuff that show up for these things and it's the same exact like five or six people that will walk into these events walk past the artist walk past everyone go to the right back right. of the room cuz you always put the wine and the food at the very back <laughs> they go beeline for it, get a like a a paper plate that's like breaking in half because they can't put any more food on it. It's like collapsing all around their hands. And so and, and chug down a couple of things. They, they, they go off into a corner, pound down the food, and and, and, and leave. We always say, and we know the people. Like, we, like uh, I, I'm one of them, aren't I? No, no, no. No, no, no. There are certain people. You never want to be. You never want to be. No, if you're these hungry, people, you're hungry, Joey. But these it's people, so funny. the thing it's of it is, they, it's either they, they have no shame whatsoever or, well, or they're completely oblivious. But we, but I will tell them if they're listening, that we know who you are <laughs> and we all talk about you behind your back. They're the same group that show up at the library open houses. Yep, 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 yep. Same group that show up at the Cape Ann Museum for their yep. Op, you know pup, free public openings. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's true. Oh, same yeah. you know, group. We, we, we know who they are. <laughs> we do, yeah. we do. I have their faces in my. I, head. I'm going to open up a gallery upstairs at the Ice Company. So if you want to bring a, you know, you? You know I've got a. 1,500 square foot space up there. It's, it's almost as nice as this. Are you really? Yeah. What, no why not? kidding. That's a great idea. What That's a fantastic idea. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got, I've got a, a deceased cousin. She died a couple of years ago from cancer who was down in Wayland and, and her. I've got all our art stored upstairs right now at the Ice Company. We're just going to oh. make a, a, do a oh, super hard gallery. gallery exhibit there. Let us That's know. We'll cover the That's a great open. space. And you have all the people coming through for the art, for the Ice House well, uh, tours. Not, you can not have them this time of year, but there will be. And right. Hotels opening up. Right, what a great idea. So, good Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm Sign us a press release. Yeah. Do you, do you, who does the press releases for you? Hi. You do them yourself, yeah. or do you have the one of the ladies in the, in the office do it? They're not there very much these days, so. Yeah. <laughs> so it's you. All right. That's why we have them. My, my girl, Brippy, you know, she's graduating from Suffolk oh, at, as a senior this year, and oh, she's going to wow. go get a real job. Uh, she's been there six years, I she think. She does the tours, too, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. 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 Yeah, they do. Uh, those toys are fantastic. The tour. Congratulations, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's great. Nice. Well, help me make it happen. I'm trying to get Sea Arts to get involved or somebody else. Yeah. But you, we have C a Arts. lot of us that will do it. Yeah. I can get you. Come on. Come on. Yeah. James yeah. Eves would be great to. Oh, yeah. James yeah. Eves. I'll great. tell you right now, James Eves has a ton of people that, that he is like, will, he represents them. He mm -hmm. takes very little money, he brings the stuff there takes it down, puts new stuff in. You don't have to do any work. And he is, his awesome. wife, I should mention his wife, Anna. I always mention James, Anna too. Uh, great it's people. Fabulous. I, I highly recommend this guy who does so much community stuff without like taking credit for it. So 
That's wow. great. I love Have that. you been upstairs? Where I store all I the t-shirts? I think I was upstairs Boxes once. of t-shirts and Yes, stuff? yes, I've been there upstairs. Okay. All right. There we go. Scott, thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. Uh, thank you. those chickens out. We'll put some, <laughs> we'll put some links to uh, all the information here Kim, for Kim Smith and Donna Arizoni from some of the Massachusetts. This is and Joey. And honored to live in Gloucester, Mass. And honored to live in Gloucester, Mass. Wear a Cape Pond ice jacket that you got for Christmas from her husband after buying herself one already. Well, I bought him one and he bought me one. Aww. And Scott was like, wait a minute. There you go. You gotta be careful. You want to squash a sale. <laughs> Gloucester cast one seventy four in the books. Thanks, guys. Yay.